what is going on i want to welcome you from half court for today tuesday december 6 2022 i'm your host sean murphy and today i want to talk about a little bit more about the Cade cunningham injury what we can expect coming down the road specifically what Cade's injury is what that means to the rest of his career is it something that could potentially linger is it something that he could potentially come back and play this season why is he choosing the route to rest why hasn't he not gotten the surgery yet I want to dive into all of it and unpack it a little bit more because I think there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of stuff that's left up in the air and there's a lot of people holding their breaths, waiting to see what happens with Kate Cunningham. So let's definitely talk about that. But first, if you like that, be sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. So you're not missing anything we have coming up here on the channel. 2023 is going to be a big year for from half court. But with that, let's get right into it. So per reporting from people like James Edwards, the third Sham Sharania, people all throughout the NBA, there is a belief that Cade Cunningham might have a stress fracture in his shin. And it is something that doesn't seem to have like long-term lingering effects. It's something that, you know, depending on if a player gets, you know, the surgery or if they choose to take the route of, of rest, it's something that, you know, shouldn't reoccur or shouldn't have much of a long-term effect on his career. Um, I, I want to see who else has had like stress fractures like in their shins we've seen players so like so players who have who have like suffered like like stress fractures um at specifically our guys like andrew bogut uh you know sean livingston is a guy who had you know who had a really bad stress fracture but that was in his knee so that's a little bit different um there's there's players who have had their careers ended due to stress fractures but again since this is in the shin since it's like at the beginning of his career and again, since it's something that, you know, they can manage and really take a look at, you know, like what they want to do, it's something that they can really, you know, be patient with. And I think the first thing that, you know, that's obvious is looking at the standings, looking at where the Pistons are at right now and and looking at what the team has going for them, you know, more than likely, I think what you're going to see is there's there's a lot of routes that that this could go. But from from what the reporting suggests, it seems like the Pistons want Cade to, to get the surgery, if that's what the doctors believe is best. It seems like they're going out and getting as many second opinions as they can, talking to as many different people as they can. And, and listen, I understand why, because if you look at on the court, it's it's apparent that this team isn't the same when Cade Cunningham isn't on that court. I mean, watching them against the Memphis Grizzlies the other night, I think that was the most glaring example of a difference between a team that has their franchise player and a team that doesn't because you, you saw Memphis like even even though like we talk about all the time about how how great of an assembly of players they have how deep that team is you know like how how many rotational pieces they have and you know the great coaching the the front office just everything about Memphis that's you know that makes them a great organization at this time none of it matters with John Moran isn't on the court even though like last year they had a pretty good record when Ja wasn't you know in the lineup this team was a whole different beast when Ja was on the court versus when he was off it the other night. The Pistons were able to climb back in the game and were, you know, caught up and, and were within as much as four, you know, in the second quarter after being down big in the first. And then Ja Morant came back in and it didn't even matter. It's not just because, you know, of his scoring and his ability to finish at the rim, but it's the, you know, the gravitational pull that he is on the offensive end, you know, you know, for, you know, the Pistons had at least three or four guys, you know, in the paint at any given time when you're a team that struggles defensively, that struggles with rotations, with communications, with focus on it, you know, for four quarters, that's something that can torch you easily. And I thought we saw exactly that. And, you know, the, the unfortunate thing that, that I, I wonder is what this team would have looked like this season if all of the pieces were there because I think we saw how different of a team this was just when they got Alec Burks back in the lineup. This team has only had two double digit losses since we've gotten Alec Burks and Marvin Bagley back in the lineup. And that's with the Cade injury. Even they went on that West coast trip, even faced dominant performances from guys like Anthony Davis. They still didn't lose in double digits on that trip. And yes, they had a rough loss against Memphis. Yes, they had a rough loss against the Knicks, but they've shown a lot of promise. And, you know, like, I, I really do believe that this team would be way more competitive if it was Cade and Ivy 
and Bagley and Burks and Bogdanovich and Dirt. Like if, if these guys really were given the opportunity to go out and run, I'm not saying they would make a play and run, but it would at least be more competitive than what it is right now. And, you know, it's, it's obviously a bummer whenever you see your number one pick go down, especially to something that, you know, that, that it, that, you know, can, you know, potentially end his season. But at the same time, like if, if you're looking at it from a silver lining standpoint, first of all, of all the injuries that you can get that, that, you know, that, that have potential to be long-term lingering injuries, this is like kind of lower on the list. And in addition, like with the fact that Detroit also has the luxury of having the cap space that they have with having all the young players that they have. Like, it's not like with Cade's absence that this team doesn't have a sense of direction, right? It's not like there wasn't like a natural pivot point for this team. Cause like, obviously people are going to say, Oh, well the Pistons are at the bottom of the standings. Like here comes the tank. And like, yeah, Obviously, the Pistons are going to be positioning themselves to be in the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes coming down the line. Like, of course, that's going to be a conversation that they're going to want to see themselves in. But like, at the same time, that doesn't mean that they're not like having a clear agenda of what those guys are trying to accomplish every night. It's not like there isn't a clear, you know, direction in in agenda of like how they're trying to get better. There, it's not like there isn't like you know a clear motive of you know this of of this is a great excuse an opportunity to put the ball in your hands of your, of your young rookie guard and Jaden Ivy. And also you get the ball in the hands of a guy like Killian Hayes and make him be the quarterback, you know, let him go out and learn to be that, you know, to be that point guard that, you know, not only does it with his playmaking, but does it with his offense as well. And, and listen, it, it allows Detroit to have that longer leash with those other players as well. And, and, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you just watch this team every night and obviously you, you, you see that Kate isn't there every night and you notice that presence was, is missed, but it, it was glaringly missed during that Memphis game. Even Ashton tweeted the, you know, himself like this team just isn't the same without two out there. And that's just, that's just the fact. So looking at like the long-term, you know, implications and down the road, like what this could mean. Listen, I think Cade, whenever he comes back is going to be awesome. I think this isn't something that you can, that like you blame to his diet. This isn't something that you blame, you know, on, on, on like the medical staff. This is just an unfortunate injury at the beginning of his career that, that luckily seems like won't hold him back because if this was something like an ACL tear, if this was something like an Achilles tear, we'd be having a completely different conversation. However, the other thing too, that helps Cade, like a lot of guys, like, you know, like a Jamal Murray, for example, like he comes back and like a lot of the question is, is he going to have that burst or not? Because a lot of his game is predicated on his athleticism, on his burst, on a lot of that stuff that that creates. But with, but with Cade, since his game, like since his game is so mental based and there's so much that 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 is based off of of what he brings to the table from from his mentality and his leadership and his work ethic and everything that he you know from his communication skills you know everything that he brings to the table in that sense is like a franchise player that still brings tremendous value and so having him on the bench still being there with the guys like obviously you can tell that they're all frustrated and you can tell that he wishes that he could be out there but at the end of the day like this is just stuff that happens and 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 listen, if this ends up with the Pistons getting Victor Wimbanyama because of it, and then they have like an all-time like potential dynasty on their hands, and like I'm not gonna complain, but like at the same time, like you shouldn't necessarily like set yourself up for like thinking that's what's gonna happen either, because we saw the lottery last year that like you never really know, like what could happen. I'm just saying, but like. You know, like I'm just, I'm just crazy, Sean. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, anyway, there, there's, there's still a super deep lottery, but nonetheless, we're actually having Steve on the pod tomorrow to talk a little bit more about the draft class, you know, what the Pistons should be focused on in that sense. But I want to know what your thoughts are. What do you think of the Cade Cunningham injury? Do you think that the Pistons should bring him back this season if they have the opportunity to, and if they don't, what do you think should happen in the interim? Do you think the Pistons should change their approach? And do you think 
they should really commit and try to tank more? Or do you really think they should go out and try to compete, maybe even make a trade? I saw people bring up John Collins as a potential option for the Pistons, which I don't really see. But if you think that's a good idea, tell me why down below. But also be sure you follow me on Twitter at Sean F. Court so you don't miss any updates and communication and also more content that we have going on here. But that is going to do it here, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will catch you guys next time from Half Court. Make sure you subscribe.